Hi, everybody. It's Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate with your update for the All Hazards Consortium of Sensitive Information Sharing Environment on this Monday, September 22nd, 2025. I am going to make this quick. Uh, we've been supporting NOAA most of the day with their hurricane reconnaissance missions uh, into Hurricane Gabrielle, which as of 5 p.m. is now a Category 4 hurricane. Uh, good news, though, it's going to miss Bermuda. We've said that all along, but large waves are impacting the island. NOAA's been conducting hurricane research into Gabrielle today. That data has also gone to the National Hurricane Center and has been uh, used operationally, uh, which is great news. Gabrielle has increased in intensity pretty rapidly. Uh, yesterday, it was a Category 1 or 2. Uh, woke up this morning, it was a Category 3, and now it's a Category 4. So it's been going through some rapid intensification over the last 24 hours. Since NOAA has been conducting their research on Gabrielle today, both WP-3D aircraft have been flying. That's Kermit and Miss Piggy. And the Gulfstream 4 aircraft, which is named Gonzo, is flying right now. I'll show you that in GeoCollaborate. And let's take a look at the statistics right now for Hurricane Gabrielle. As of five o'clock, here we go. It is a category four hurricane. Gabrielle now has winds of 140 miles per hour. And now interests in the Azores should monitor the forecast for Gabrielle because uh, the storm does look like it's going to pass very close, if not over, some of the Azores uh, in a few days. It won't be as strong as this, uh, but it will be moving forward uh, at a forward speed that's pretty quick, and it will have hurricane force winds. Right now, Gabrielle located 31.7 north, 61.8 west at 5 p.m. Eastern time, 180 miles east-southeast of Bermuda. Look where it's headed headed to the north-northeast. That's away from Bermuda. Maximum sustained winds, 140 miles per hour. That places it solidly as a Category 4 hurricane. Minimum central pressure, 948 millibars. And uh, the next update, next advisory will be issued by the National Hurricane Center at uh, 11 p.m. this evening. Now, this is what it looks like on the mesoscale sector of the GOES satellite. It almost looks like Typhoon Ragasa that went through northern Philippine islands earlier today. Uh, boy, that's a, that's a terrible view. I'm going to show you that satellite image here uh, in just a few minutes. But Gabrielle is really a very mature storm. As a matter of fact, on the left-hand side, of the hurricane. It has started to fill in with more uh, thunderstorm activity. Some of the hurricane recon flights earlier today were saying that it was a little bit uh, ragged on the left-hand side, but it's really now closed in. And uh, this, is, uh, this is the eye wall right in here. It's very, very strong showers and thunderstorms. I know I can't draw very well, uh, but uh, it's right around the center of the storm, generating waves of 30 to 40 feet uh, close to the center of the storm. Uh, but officials today on the NOAA uh, Hurricane aircraft on the P3s, uh, they did drop a wave spectral drifter from the plane into the ocean very close uh, to Hurricane Gabrielle. Now, these small drif drifters, uh, they measure wave heights and they report in near real time uh, conditions uh, that we receive at NOAA and in GeoCollaborate. I wanted to share with you and, and give you a look into how these wave drifters are deployed. Here, take a look. On Sunday, while flying into Hurricane Gabrielle, NOAA's Jason Hunsinger and Tom Brannigan deploy a wave spectral drifter from the P-3 Hurricane Hunter aircraft. Less than 30 minutes later, the data was showing up in GeoCollaborate. This data can inform forecasters at NHC so they can adjust the forecast for wave impacts, rip current outlooks, and compare observed winds to the generation of very large swells. Emergency managers can better prepare their communities even while far away from the storm. Isn't that incredible? Can drop from that altitude, maybe 5,000 feet or so, right into the ocean and start reporting. It's really just amazing. Now, here we are back looking at uh, Gabrielle because I have a couple of key points I wanna deliver. The first one is swells 
generated by Gabrielle will continue to affect Bermuda and the east coast of the United States from North Carolina northward, as well as Atlantic Canada, during the next several days. So be very, very careful uh, if you go swimming from North Carolina northward, uh, because those rip currents could be very, very bad. And we know that most lifeguards are now off, so many of the beaches are not guarded. These swells are likely to cause life-threatening surf and rip current conditions. So uh, please consult products from the National Weather Service office. And if you have any coastal uh, television stations nearby, uh, they'll be talking about the rip current risk as well. Also, I mentioned the Azores. Gabrielle is forecast to approach the Azores late on Thursday. So if you're watching from there, you come across this video, uh, you should monitor the progress of Gabrielle. Uh, though it's too soon to specify the magnitude of the potential wind, rainfall, and wave impacts, uh, it could be significant. So please pay very close attention to the progress of Hurricane Gabrielle. And here's what Gabrielle looks like and where Bermuda is. You can see Bermuda, just some high, thin cirrus clouds there. So nothing in the way of storms or showers, uh, but the waves are propagating out. And uh, there are very large and dangerous swells impacting particularly the eastern facing sides uh, of Bermuda. Now, what does it look like from the standpoint of the Hurricane Center forecast? This is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center, and uh, it has 140 mile per hour winds now. This is the 12 hour forecast, so 5 a.m. Tuesday, uh, still a category four hurricane, just getting down to category three forecast, and to remain there uh, in category three uh, territory uh, during uh, the night Tuesday into Wednesday morning. Uh, and then you can see it slowly decreasing in intensity. But this is the period right here. Uh, let me point it out, <clears throat> excuse me, with my uh, drawing. This is between uh, Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time and Friday is when it's likely to impact the Azores. And you can see that it's still a hurricane. And, you know, when a hurricane is moving uh, quickly to the northeast, the right-hand side, you have to add the component of the speed of the movement onto the wind speed. So if it has 80 mile per hour winds, the right hand side of the storm, if it's moving at 20 miles per hour, gives it 100 mile per hour winds on the right hand side. Uh, so this is something we're going to be gauging now from the official National Hurricane Center forecast. We're going to show you what that is. We're not going to throw all sorts of model forecasts at you. We're going to put on the official National Hurricane Center forecast. Okay, the other thing I want to point out is of interest, a couple of other systems that are expected to develop into tropical systems. And uh, I'm going to show that on GeoCollaborate, but I want to show you first on satellite imagery. Here is Gabrielle, very impressive looking. There's Bermuda, the little dot right there. Sea surface temperatures are very warm. Look at this, very warm throughout much of the Atlantic Basin. This is the main development region all the way over from Mexico, all the way over to um, uh, Africa, and the temperatures are warm enough uh, where this uh, area of concern is right now, uh, well east and northeast of the uh, Lesser Antilles. But this is one of the systems that we're keeping an eye on, and this one is going to track just north of the islands and then get into a position in this area uh, where it could prove to be a threat uh, to some part of the east coast of the United States, perhaps the Bahamas as well. Uh, but we're gonna be watching this one right here. And there's one behind it as well that has a high likelihood of developing and almost following in Gabrielle's footsteps up a little bit further to the north. So these are two systems uh, that we're gonna watch. I'm gonna switch over to GeoCollaborate and show you what that looks like as well. So you can see how much of the Atlantic Basin is uh, covered in tropical activity right now. So here's GeoCollaborate. I'll even move it over here so we can see NARDA. Uh, this is a, a tropical storm, NARDA, likely to become a hurricane here very shortly. Uh, but here's Gabrielle and the forecast path for Gabrielle. The Azores are right in here. You can see some of the islands here, uh, right in here. And so uh, this is what we're concerned about uh, for the next potential land interaction 
of Gabrielle. Uh, this system right here, I showed you on the satellite imagery, is expected to move into this area, which includes the Bahamas, uh, Turks and Caicos as well. And uh, we have a high likelihood, 50% likelihood over the next seven days that we're going to have a tropical system developing here. So all eyes on the East Coast uh, should watch out for this development and we'll be starting updates uh, every day, uh, probably on Wednesday uh, with this system. And then this one over here, the one behind it, looks like it'll track a little bit further to the north. And look at this, a 30% chance over the next two days, but an 80% chance over the next seven days. So we're going to be watching that very, very closely. And over here is uh, Tropical Storm Narda. And you can see Narda right here on the satellite imagery. This is the Goes West satellite I've got on the sea surface temperature data. So plenty of warm Pacific temperatures here where Narda is forecast to move. Uh, those of you in Hawaii, let me move over here just a little bit further. Uh, in Hawaii, uh, you don't have to worry uh, about NARDA at this time. Here's Hawaii way over here. Uh, NARDA is taking, expected to take a westward track, uh, but uh, we don't think it's going to make it all the way over towards Hawaii. We'll be keeping an eye out for you though. Aloha. Thank you for watching. Uh, mahalo. Uh, it looks like the weather has still been fair in Hawaii after your close call with Kiko. Big waves uh, out there as well. And that humidity uh, is mostly out of there uh, now. Uh, but here's NARDA all the way over here. And let me drag the satellite imagery over here so I can give you what some of the latest uh, data looks like uh, on NARDA. Let's take a look at that right now. So as of uh, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, so 5 p.m. Eastern Time, NARDA is expected to become a hurricane tomorrow on Tuesday. It's located at 16.2 uh, North. 103.9 west. That's uh, three, 195 miles south of Manzanillo, Mexico. So here's Man Manzanillo right in here. So it's now uh, 195 miles south. So waves are getting kicked up. Swells once again in Acapulco. You're, you're used to that for sure, especially this hurricane season. Maximum winds right now, 60 miles per hour. The central pressure, 997 millibars. Uh, and it looks like we could have uh, a hurricane during the day tomorrow. That's the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Moving west-northwest at 13. Next advisory will be uh, 11 a.m. Eastern Time or 9 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Hawaii, we got our eyes on you. We're going to be watching out for you. Uh, we'll make sure that we tell you where Nardo is heading. Okay, back to GeoCollaborate here. I wanted to just share with you, uh, there's a lot of squiggly lines here, right? Uh, but I, I can decipher this for you. Look at this yellow line right here. This yellow line is Gonzo. This is the NOAA aircraft N49 RF. And look at that. It's in the air right now. It is uh, surveying the environment of Hurricane Gabrielle, sending this data back to the National Hurricane Center. It's going to come up here and then it's going to take a turn and go right over the top of Hurricane Gabrielle. It did this yesterday, one of the first times ever that the uh, Gulf Stream 4 aircraft has flown directly over a hurricane. It flies about 45 to 50,000 feet and uh, it can do it. Uh, it can do it and will do it safely, of course. Uh, but this is a real experiment in how we can use these aircraft uh, to gather more information in and around hurricanes. So this is pretty amazing. Uh, what a terrific crew on N49 there. And they're even dropping drop sons uh, and they'll try to drop them into the center of the storm as well. So we may get additional pressure readings and wind readings from the center of Gabrielle. Uh, now that the NOAA P-3 aircraft have both landed in uh, Bermuda. That is where they're going to overnight tonight. Where's the P-3 aircraft going? Let me zoom out and I'll show you. So it took off from Puerto Rico. There you go, from San Juan. It took off uh, today. It's now making its uh, circumnavigation of Gabrielle. And then it will do a cross across it. Then it will recover. It will land back in Lakeland, Florida. 
So it's going to land over here. We'll show you that track. That track will be in GeoCollaborate. It builds in real time as the plane flies. Now I'm going to zoom in here as well because I want to show you something else that's pretty neat. Look at this. This is a wave drifter. The video that you show, saw just earlier, this is an example of a wave drifter. Once it hits the ocean, and look at this, it's in within the hurricane force winds right now. Let's see what the wave heights are. I just have to click on that and look at this. Whoa, 21 foot waves, 6.4 meter waves right here, right now, uh, near Hurricane Gabrielle. It's not in the eye wall, but it is generating large swells and large waves here. So thank goodness for Scripps Oceanographic Institute designing these devices and for NOAA and the flight crew and the team deploying these into the ocean so we can see what the waves look like in these storms. Watch this. I'm going to go down to the south a little bit and show you the two drifters that were deployed yesterday. The waves will be much lower here, 11 feet. 11 foot waves here, and even this one a little bit further away, maybe a little less, 9.4 foot waves uh, right here. Uh, and these will be out here reporting data while uh, additional storms may be forming. And you can see this sort of hashed area. This is the area where we're looking at further development by the National Hurricane Center. So all these drifters out here, here are the Sea Star uh, uh, autonomous robots, uh, the green and the purple and the blue and the red. These are autonomous robots that have little sails on them uh, that are gathering data and information when storms come by as well. Here are additional drifters here. We have Argo floats and these yellow lines are uh, gliders. We told you about gliders the other day. They're phenomenal systems. And look, going down into the Caribbean here and also out of Barbados uh, doing this uh, kind of path, getting information on what's below the ocean surface as far as temperature and salinity. Okay, so the last thing I want to leave you with, Typhoon Regassa has been downgraded from a super typhoon with Category 5 winds of 180 miles per hour gusting to 200 Winds are now down to 143 miles per hour. That will be a Category 4 hurricane in the Atlantic Basin or in the uh, Central or Eastern Pacific. Uh, it did impact uh, the islands in the Luzon Straits earlier today with Category 5 winds. It is now headed further into the South China Sea. I'll shift this over just a little bit so you can see where it's headed. Uh, headed into the South China Sea. Uh, where it is going to gradually weaken. But significant wave heights, when it came through the Luzon Straits, 45 feet were the significant wave heights with this storm. That's continuing as this impressive typhoon with its structure continues as well. We're going to see it slowly weaken, uh, but it will impact the coast of China in a couple of days. I have not heard of any communications with the impacted islands as of yet. If we hear anything, we'll certainly let you know, uh, and we'll pray for the people on those islands as well. But uh, uh, Typhoon Ragasa will slowly weaken as it moves into the South China Sea and will make landfall as a tropical storm or a tropical depression in parts of northern Vietnam. So that's it for this update. I'm Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. Tomorrow we'll talk a little bit more about the models, uh, the National Hurricane Center's forecast, and where uh, that one system, that first system right there, approaching uh, the Lesser Antilles as a tropical wave, uh, may end up as a potential tropical storm or a hurricane uh, later towards the weekend into early next week. So thanks so much for watching this update. It's been for the All Hazards Consortium, the sensitive information sharing environment. Please watch out for yourself and watch out for your neighbors. They really do appreciate it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.